All right, we'll do more Q&A here in a while, but we got uh, two shows to get into, the SmackDown and the Collision Show. Mm-hmm. So SmackDown opened up. The first thing they do is clips of Rock's return on Raw, and then Roman shows up, and Kayla says, what do you think of that appearance? And Roman looks at her, he laughs, and he walks away. Sounds to me like this match is on. This match is on. It's just a question of when and where. But yeah. this match is on. Yeah. Then we had Kevin Owens and Santos Escobar, finals of the U.S. title tournament. Very, very good match. Very There's good a lot match. of good wrestling on this show. Yeah, yeah. Logan yeah, yeah. There, was a, there was a lot of good wrestling on the show, yeah. Logan was at ringside and uh, did commentary for the entire match. and A lot of back and forth, long match. And finally, Owens hits a stunner for the pin. And uh, there's an odd bit of he- hesitation there at the finish because um, he hit the pop-up power bomb, and Santos kind of stumbled to the corner and then just stood there. And Owens is in the middle of the ring waiting for him to come out, and he just stands there for a while. And finally Owens has to go, ah! And so then he stumbles forward, and Owens hits the uh, stunner and pins him. But Logan cut a promo afterwards, said no way a Canadian was ever going to hold the U.S. title. And he says, uh, I am Logan Paul. Kevin ends up punching him with the cast, knocks him down. And boy, that- I tell you what, boy, was there a difference between Kevin Owens selling his hand and uh, Nia Jax on Monday. It was like two different businesses. Well, he's got a whole cast on, and they worked it over the entire match. And this has been an ongoing storyline here. Yeah. But uh, Theory and Waller interrupted after the break. And so we got to get you to the trainer's room. And Cameron Grimes shows up. Laughs at Waller. Waller shoves him. They're wrestling next week. I, I just thought Logan Paul was great on this on this show. He's 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 a hell of a dislikable guy. Man, I have never seen a guy with so few matches. Um, I've seen a few guys come in that can talk like him. Okay, but but and not a ton, not a ton without like that that new in the business. But just as an overall package, I mean, it's like this guy, like, like if he actually, like, devoted himself to this business, which will never happen, I mean, like, he could be, like, like a freaking all-time great at this. He's, like, so – I've seen so few people so freaking um, – May, he was made for this business, you know, or this business was made for him. I don't know exactly how to say it, but, but uh, you know, I mean, he, he's – you know, a celebrity who can do, I mean, he can he can work, he can talk, he's got the look, he's completely dislikable. You know, was, when he was trying to be a baby face, that wasn't the smartest thing, but he's given that one up. I think it's unlikable. I apologize, everybody. So then Lashley came out to cut a promo, and, uh, well, they figured it out. They've turned the Street Profits and Bobby Lashley full baby face. Yeah. And he says Montez and Dawkins are going to go after the tag titles. He wants to win the Royal if Rumble. They're, if they're, if they're going to be baby faces, they might as well be baby faces that are over and go back to their old gimmick. They should go back at least to the old music. Yeah. And so after they declare, or at least uh, Bobby declares, Scarlet and Cross video package plays. They come out on the ramp. It's all dark. And then behind them appears Paul Ellering. AOP makes their return through the crowd. They beat down Lashley and the Street Profits with the help of Cross. And uh, that's a new faction, Carrion, Scarlet, AOP, and Paul Ellering. Yep, that's the new feud. So it's something for them all to do. So essentially we got a three-man unit with two managers. Yes. Wait, well, wait, one's wait. valet. I don't think Eller. you know, um, I'm surprised that they used Ellering, honestly. You know, I mean... Um, I mean, and I'm surprised, I'm, I, you know, at seven, you know, well, the, this travel's not as bad, but he's, you know, he's 70 years old. Yeah. I mean, it's like, I don't know that like at 70, you want to do WWE travel, but he's, he's probably just going to go to one TV a week. I would guess that they want to eat him at the house shows. Just have yeah. Scarlett go out with AOP. Yeah. Meech and Eo Sky for the women's title. This match was really good. This was the best match Meech has ever had in WWE. She looked great. EO gave her 80% e- of the match. Easy. EO, e- EO, EO was the one who made the match, though. Well, sure, e- but, I mean, it EO, takes EO, two. EO was tremendous in this match. Meacham was good, but EO was great. I mean, this was like the EO Sky from Stardom as opposed to the EO Sky from WWE. She just, um, man, yeah, this, this, was, this was her best, I wouldn't say her best match, but it was her best performance in a long time. So, like I said, she gave... 
Meechin easily 80% of this match. Just every time she tried something, Meechin cut her off. Just one big move after another. And finally, Meechin goes up, uh, go for the tope. EO moves, and she just splats on the mats. EO hits a meteor on the barricade, another in the corner, and then hits the moonsault for the pin. Excellent women's title match here. Yeah. So Paul Heyman talks about The Rock. He said The Rock wants to sit at the head of the table. For that to happen, you must be invited to a dinner of relevancy. So I guess that'll be The Rock's next appearance, the dinner of relevancy. Yeah. He said everybody just wants to make their name by calling out Roman Reigns. Yeah, by by dating Taylor Swift or calling out Roman Reigns. Says, well, at least he's at least he's at least he's picking like the right celebrity to talk about. He didn't bring up Marilyn Monroe, for example. <laughs> Why did somebody do that lately? No, nah, just thinking of someone who was, you know, a little before my time. So everybody wanted Roman, just like whoever won the three way tonight will face Roman at the Rumble. Not one man on this planet. Which, by the way, I don't know if you guys know how clever that was. He said, "Not one man on the planet." What does that mean? Can beat Roman Reigns. Well, it will not be one man at the Rumble. It will be three. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I thought I thought you meant that 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 it they're would be a woman. A, no, no, they'll bring in a Martian. Could be that too, but uh, or someone from the moon. Not one man was very clever based on what yes. they were doing later. Yeah, damage control did a promo backstage. Bailey's all happy, and uh, then Bianca shows up and says she's entering the Rumble. She's going to win. She's going to take the title back from well, Io. The, the, the thing is, is that they made this thing that that um, Bailey said that Io's never going to lose the women's title. And that uh, Asuka and Kyrie are going to win the tag team titles, and she's going to win the Rumble, and then beat um, um, uh, what's her name, Rhea Ripley, and um, win that women's title. And then uh, Bianca came in and just goes, "No, I mean that other stuff may happen, but uh, I'm winning the Rumble, and I'm going to beat Io and end her title reign." So that was the the setup there. So Io says, "We can't let this happen, Bailey. You need to take care of Bianca." So that's on next week. We had uh, Pretty Deadly versus Butch and a mystery partner who ended up being the debuting Tyler Bate. And Tyler got the win. They did a double Tiger Driver for the pin, which they need a new finisher immediately. Tyler Driver. It was a double Tyler Driver. They yeah. each did it together, which did yeah. not look very impressive. And, uh, you know, Tyler looked good. I mean, everybody looked I think, good. I think he looked great. Tyler was, Bate is such a, he's a freaking fantastic wrestler. Well, he is. He looks better when he actually has a long match. This was like... They didn't have a lot of time. They didn't but have he, great crowd heat. He so looked. He really. He really looked. He did. He did like all of his cool British stuff and the airplane spin stuff. And um, you know, I was just thinking like he's been in the system for seven years and he's finally good enough to be in the main roster. Even though he was good the enough very about first, seven years ago. Seven years ago, when I saw him, it's like, man, this guy needs to be on the main roster like tomorrow. But it is a different main roster. Like then. I would have also said he will fail miserably on the main roster. Now I wouldn't say that because, you know, it's a very much more open-minded idea as far as who can be a star. I don't know that he will be a big star, but it's not like there's no chance of it. Whereas seven years ago, you know, he'd been brought to the main roster and he'd be, you know, Chad Gable. You know what I mean? Shorty, shorty, shorty bait. Then we, uh, oh, they'd had a much, much better name for him seven years ago. (laughs) <laughs> Nick Aldis with Ashanti the Adonis. Ashanti says, uh, you know, I don't know what my place is. I feel lost. I don't want pity. I'm hungry. I'm ready. So Aldis says, you know, I might have a couple ideas for you. So the main event was L.A. Knight, A.J., and Randy to determine a number one contender. This was another one. Very good Very, match. very good three-way match. Very good match until the finish. Yeah, L.A. got busted open. And you know what was so amazing about him getting busted open? He's bleeding, and, you know, Vince's WWE, they had to stop the match or got him outside and taped him up and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not here. He gets busted open, and AJ goes over. He starts AJ pounding starts on the cut, and he's bleeding like, all over now. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, he's bleeding, and then Orton hits the RKO out of midair on AJ when he goes for the forearm. L.A. pulls the ref out of the ring, and so the ref is down. And L.A.'s bleeding all over. He crawls to the middle of the ring, and then Roman's music hits. And so they hit the ring. It's him and and Jimmy and Solo. They start beating down all three guys. 
And uh, Roman Powerbomb Zay J says, who's next? They throw L.A. in. He spears and Superman punches him. They give Orton the spear spike combo. They're celebrating the ring. And Nick Aldis is at ringside watching all of this. And he just watches it. And then they're celebrating. And then he calmly walks over to Paul Heyman. Not with a mic or anything. They just get the camera in real close so you can hear him talking like a normal person. And he says, Paul, when these guys are done celebrating, you let Roman know he just turned himself a fatal four-way against these three guys at the Royal Rumble. And he walks off, and that's the end of the show. And the end of the show. So what they want here is, you know, no one believes anyone's beaten Roman Reigns. And they're not going to believe this either. But I think the idea is, well, it's a fatal four-way. You know, maybe somebody will pin somebody else or whatever. So they're trying to find something. Well, so the actual deal here is that um, the original idea was was Roman and Randy Orton for the Rumble. And essentially, there were parties involved who did not want to beat Randy Orton this early, obviously, you know, and just felt that there's money to be made with, with Randy Orton and Roman in a program at some point. Um, but it's too soon to, to do it. But L.A. Knight just got beat, and A.J. Has, isn't strong enough. Um, I think A.J. was the guy that they probably would have wanted because, uh, um, you know, Roman can beat him. and you know. But well, he is going to beat him. Yeah, I mean, I presume A.J. is the one, the one that's going to lose. Maybe not. He could be L.A. Um, but, the, but the basic gist was that, um, you know, they... AJ gives them someone they can beat. LA gives them someone they can beat. The thing with that match, watching it, was, you know, LA Knight is so over right now and everything. But Randy Orton just, like, I don't know what it was. Randy Orton's presence is really great right now, partially because he's so freaking huge, but also because Randy Orton, like, he, like, knows what to do at a level that very few guys do. You know when these wrestlers talk about how great Randy Orton is, and then you go like, yeah, but he never has great matches, which is true. You know, he doesn't. But Randy Orton has incredible presence, and um, what he does, he does tremendously well. And, I mean, I just thought watching this that, like, AJ was really good in this match, and LA Knight was was, was fine. Um, but Randy Orton still felt, just watching it, like he's... Even, you know, so much of a bigger star than the other two. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.